A bipartisan call in New South Wales to ban unvaccinated children from preschools and childcare centres could gain nationwide acceptance. Controversial? Perhaps. But life-saving? Definitely. We've seen the science. The science is compelling. Vaccination is a very good thing. The Minister's right. Vaccination is a very good thing. But don't take our word for it. Let's go to the science. Vaccines have saved the lives of hundreds of millions of people from diseases like diphtheria, measles and whooping cough. That's a fact. When vaccines are given, death rates go down. Vaccines work in two ways. First, immunisation protects the individual from diseases. And second, when enough people are immunised, it reduces the spread of disease in the community. That means when immunisation rates drop, more people are vulnerable. We have immunisation rates in parts of Sydney that are lower than places like Iran and Rwanda. The current rates are so low that epidemics are a matter of when, not if. While 77,000 Australian kids aren't up to date with their immunisations, only a small percentage of parents outright refuse to have their children vaccinated. Their reasons are varied, but a big element of vaccine refusal is fear of adverse reactions. A vaccine's a medication, so they all have potential um, side effects, but these are a much smaller risk compared to the risk of getting the disease. Those fears can be inflamed by misinformation. You may have heard of a link between vaccines and certain illnesses, that they overwhelm children's immune systems or even that the vaccine is worse than the disease. Rest assured, all of those theories have been scientifically investigated and not one of them is true. It's very clear that vaccination is much safer than not vaccinating. Dr Rachel Dunlop is a researcher from UTS. She's also a podcaster, blogger and science communicator. Rachel, it's alarming to hear a statistic like the fact that parts of Sydney have lower vaccination rates than Rwanda I mean, that gets our attention, but what does that actually mean? Um, well, it means, Charlie, that there are lots of kids that aren't fully vaccinated, and that means that they're at risk of contracting vaccine-preventable diseases like measles, like whooping cough. And also, um, it puts other children at risk too, particularly very young children, particularly babies, who might not have had any vaccinations yet. So we want to make sure that everyone in the community is protected, so we need lots of people to get vaccinated. Dr Dunlop, the debate today has turned on this idea of banning children who are not vaccinated from going to childcare or preschool. Are you a supporter of that? Do you think that is going to drive greater vaccination rates in those parts of Sydney you're talking about? There are things we need to consider, and that is that other children can get harmed if their children, um, if they haven't got enough kids that are vaccinated in a childcare. And sometimes there are rules in society that we need to ab abide by to live as a society. We can't drive drunk. We can't take peanut butter sandwiches to childcare. So maybe this will start a conversation where parents can discuss it, talk about it. I'm glad we're having this discussion. I think it's a healthy discussion. We know, as scientists, that vaccines are not 100% safe. They're not 100% effective. But we know the risks that uh, come from vaccinations are tiny, 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 minuscule compared to what happens with the disease. Mm. So we need to discuss all these things and then parents make a decision based on the risk ratio. And it's absolutely the safest way to go with vaccines. We deliberately decide not to give anti-vaccination groups airtime on this program or communicate their arguments because we think an overwhelming amount of the research suggests that their position is invalid. Should we be explaining their side of this issue? You know, I don't think so because by giving them the same sort of time on television or on radio, it creates this impression in people's minds that experts are divided or experts haven't decided. And in every single case, the science is in to demonstrate that vaccines are effective, they're cheap and they are safe. So it just confuses parents even more if you bring in people that have some crazy ideas, actually. And I sort of liken it to having a Holocaust denier on a discussion about World War II. Well, you wouldn't do that, so why bring in someone with crazy ideas? Rachel, thanks very much for your time tonight. Thank you. This is really important because having, I've got kids who go to childcare and it's, it's like there's like a punch bowl of germs at the mm. childcare where everyone brings, pours all their germs in and everyone gets to take them all home. So, but when but I made the point to you guys earlier in the day, when I raised this ever on Talkback Radio, you get hammered with people saying vaccinations are dangerous, your kid's going to get autism. They believe this stuff. But that's just not the case anymore. It's not the it's case. Not. And it's interesting when you hear about the idea that you can't take peanut butter sandwiches to yes, daycare, exactly. but yet ki kids can go unvaccinated when you hear More that argument. 
that than you government. Realize More now. power to New yeah, South Wales absolutely. for doing this. Uh, there's a lot of information all over the place on the internet, but if you're after a balanced neutral view on vaccinations, head to the National Centre for Immunisation Research. The link's on our website. The information there is valid. Stay with us. Lots more to come.